but it's cut to the heart. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my heart out to you this morning. But it's our the the songs that Dana, the Kutu songs that Dana put in, and we kind of put them together. Had no idea what they were telling a story. They were telling the story of this. When Chris got up and spoke, when Chris came in and she said what she said to me in the back, and, and she was in tears. Um, this is, and, and she told me what she told you guys about the people don't. There's no church that feels like home. There's no place that I feel loved, wanted. If we really become that, if we really are that, when people finally figure that out, when God opens that door, it will be everything we dreamed it can be. But for the core group that God's brought together, we gotta we gotta grow. We gotta make sure we're the real thing and we gotta be prepared. And I think a lot of what we're seeing is God cutting through the heart of some things in our own lives, okay? This is going to get kind of deep, but kind of not deep, serious, but not serious, and then bam, okay? <laughs> bam, okay? But it says, cut to the heart, a lesson from the dead. Now, uh, the song that was playing, um, is uh, that while y'all were greet and greet and while you were grabbing food, uh, was the day the fire went out. I came in here on Saturday morning because I just wanted to be here by myself, just me and God. And uh, clean for two and a half, three hours. It normally takes me 20 minutes. Well, actually, me and Dana 20 minutes. But anyway, I was cleaning my rear off and I was playing music. And I'm like, waiting for God to speak. And I'm like, all this music. And I, heard, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with everything, but I wanted to know if I'm missing something. I said, you, and I finally said, God, did you speak or not? And that song came on the day the fire went out. This is not a Christian song, but this is by the, the lead singer of Delirious, the, a couple of the worship songs that we sang. Uh, this is a band he has, They're not Christian, uh, but they have, they have, you know, sometimes the stories are romantic, but the story, but they have a good message in them. But the day the fire went out, these are the, these are the lyrics. I remember the day you said goodbye, the furnace we built just left here to die. Nothing but embers, nothing but lumps. And that's talking about a relationship. But how, that, could, that could be our relationship with God when we walk away. Jesus said that. I remember the day you said goodbye. I remember the day that the relationship between you and that spouse. And I had to look back at what we've been through as a church lately. I God, is it, I mean, I think we're right where we're supposed to be. I think you know exactly what you're doing. But am I wrong? And then the song comes on. <laughs> the day the fire went out. Are you telling me something? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> But I don't buy that in a minute because, first of all, if I hear something or you tell me something, my spirit's got to agree with it. My spirit's going to tell me, and I didn't agree with it, but I'm like, what is it trying to tell me? There's something hidden there because I don't normally I don't normally let God speak to me through songs because that could be my chance. Right? Or by a person because they could be a broken person and they're talking out of their hurt. So you can't listen. So anyway, here's a... Here's some more of the lyrics. Come on, catch up to me. There we go. And, but and this is the end. It's, but I walked through the flames just for you, Jesus. And our love, and our love for what will be, maybe hope can set you free, so please don't let the fire go out. So the song is the day the fire went out, but God said, Jesus is saying, don't let the fire go out. And the songs and the testimony to you, I promise you, the one song, the one day to add to it by Elevation Worship, mm -hmm. you promise. Israel. Yeah, I mean, every song was like, okay, okay, okay. I'm like, yeah, oh yeah. I sound like Willie. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. I sound like Willie over there. <laughs> Willie's rubbing off on me. But here's the deal. God has given every person in this room a promise of some sort. And it looks like it's over. You made choices. People made choices. You're the victim of circumstances. You're the victim of your own consequences. But God says, I got you. We're going to finish what I started in you. And that's where the fifth vision, the name comes. The message from, Zeru uh, from Zechariah to Zerubbabel, where we get our fifth vision from, was the hand, tell Zerubbabel, the hand that started it is the hand that's going to finish it. He, he spent 17 years and all he got was a foundation laid. Dude, I get that. How long are we going to keep playing this game, God? How long are we going to cycle? Uh, until the promise you made 
God says, the hand is starting, the hand to finish it. I've got you. Don't let the fire go out. Maybe there's a relationship. Maybe he, he, we're going to cut through some things. Because uh, I was trying to cut to the heart. This is Dabo Sweeney, all right? And after the Clemson Carolina game last Saturday, he was, he had his post conference thing the next day, and he was up. Set. They ripped him, didn't they? No, no. Well, he ripped the fans, and then the, the pundits ripped him. Okay? Because what he said was the, the Carolina people were like, yeah, we, we had 500 yards passing. Oh, yeah, we they lost, but they felt like they won. The Clemson people won by 21 points, but because we gave up so many points, and we felt like we lost. So the Evo had issues with that. How do you be the, how do you defeat your arch rival by 21 points and feel like you lost? Yeah. But that's the way we can be in church. God can do all this stuff in our lives. Then one little thing happens and we're defeated and we sell out. And so Sweeney was addressing the media, which was addressing us, the fans, or the fans that are, you know, most fans, <laughs> for those who are the guilty Man. ones. But what he wanted, well, listen, but what he wanted was he didn't want that lie, that deception, that voice to infect his own players. Because they believe. They just won by 21 points over their arch rival, and you're trying to make them feel guilty and ashamed and hurt and guilty and broken? It was a good game. Things happened. So anyway, this was the following day after that when they went back and asked him about it again. And I love what he said. I don't want our players to ever walk on the field ever with a win in, in the so-called feel like a loss. And how sad is that? The objective is to win the game. And, you know, I, I, I just, like I said, the fun's in the winning. And if it ain't fun to win, well, man, that's a sad state of affairs. Y'all see anything up there that says win the national championship? It's never been there. That's never been a goal. Amen. I mean, I mean, I don't measure success that way. I mean, what if we went uh, 12 and 0 or 13 and 0, and, and some committee doesn't vote us into the playoff? Does that mean we had an awful year? I don't want to be judged personally by how my boys turn out in life. Amen. How my three sons turn out. I, judge me by that. Judge me by how my players go on in life. What, how, what kind of impact they make in their in their marriages, in their communities, in their societies. That's how I want to be judged. I don't want to be judged by whatever my win-loss record ends up being. I mean, I've been to the top of the mountain. I've been, I've been there as a player. I've been there as a coach. That's great. That's an awesome moment. But it's just a very small moment, and that's not what you remember. What you remember more than anything is the journey to, to get there, the relationships, the grind. The failures, the stick to itness, the perseverance, the fight, uh, you know, that's what you remember. And that's ultimately what matters more than anything. Amen. How does that apply to what I was dealing with? And, you know, he said, he looked over, they have a board all their goals. Win the open, you know, win the next one, <laughs> win the closer, you know. The thing is, is and, win the, and then win the last game. Like, I think it's what. You know, but it never specifies we've been a national championship. Okay? If you do everything right with God, if you're if, if you obey him, if you submit to him, if you follow his will for you today, if I follow him for my will for today, in 10 years or 20 years, at the end we'll be right where we want, and everything we ever dreamed, the very dream God gave us to do to become, will happen. But the goal. It's not to win a national championship. But if you do everything that is asked of you with honor, integrity, commitment, loyalty, with fire and passion, well, the end, well, the end is what it is. Okay? And I like that. Is, is the goal here to build a 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 member church? That will never be the goal. But like he said, judge me by the, my kids. Not everybody's going to that door is going to be a Jeff kid or a Dave kid. You know, because some people ain't gonna allow you to invest in them. Some people are gonna be mad and angry, but you know when God opens that door, well, I don't, don't want to judge us by the lives and the people who commit to it, who are committed together, and because some people ain't gonna join together. But the ones who do, then I'm responsible for that. 
Okay? Well, I want... If you find who you are in God, if your marriage is healed, if you find faith, if you find your purpose, now I'm happy. I have met what, what God told me that we were going to do. Be a transformational church. We're going to change ministry. And so when things come in and try to make us go back to what they had when they were growing up, or what they had over here with that corner, no, 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 uh, I've had that scene. Don't want that scene. Judge me, not by the numbers. Judge me by the hearts and lives that are impacted and changed. Oh, by the way, when you make that, you're making a commitment to people. Because people don't change because of one sermon. They change over years. So I'm asking to do, what I'm asking, what God asked me to do is put the time in. Put the investment in. And I will build, we will build around that. And we will build something to where that is what will change the world. All right? But I get it. Cut to the heart. It cut into the heart that you were destroying my players. So when I found out that things are happening in our circles and somebody's trying to destroy that unity, that love, at some point, you got to cut to the heart and go, no, that's not who we are. And that's never who we're going to be. You know? Chris was talking about the, the, the people she saw at the funeral and things. They ain't got a place where they feel loved. They ain't got a place that feels like family. See, God never asked this church to be friendly. He has his church to change the world, to love the lost, the broken, the, the widow, the, 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 the fatherless. He, he called us to love one another and absolutely hurt and cry for one another, to feel each other's pain, to feel each other's joy. No motive, no games, no backstabbing, no division. But that's hard to build in a church. It is hard to build in a family. Okay? But the good thing about church, as Jesus said about it, Jesus said, well, I can't, I can't even fix my own family. I don't get it. Well, Jesus said, a prophet is a prophet everywhere but in his own hometown. So this created a place where I know you're past, and we all got past, and we all made mistakes, and we've all been hurt and been broken. But if we're going to level the playing field here, and people are going to believe in you. People are going to love you. Now what you do with it will be, a, will be your legacy. But I want to do something special. Something special. Uh, right now, what's happening in our nation, uh, the sermon title is Cut to the Heart. There were some things going on in our country, absolutely going on, and a lot of people, if you took time to see it, you could see it. Well, a group of people in the military saw it. They were bound by the Constitution. They were bound by their oath to the military. And they were in a position where they said, Okay, something's going on, all right? <laughs> Let me show you this verse here. Acts 2, 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? <clears throat> See, something, something, something hit them hard. It cut their heart. They felt the pain. She come in bawling over what happened to people. And she's like, we gotta be a family for them. They are they are not, they are broken, they're lost, they're in church, but they aren't in love, they aren't. This is exactly why I started this. She's cut to the heart. I said I'd never get back into ministry, but my heart for people, I was cut to the heart. And God, we're trying to build something nobody's ever seen. And everything we do, the enemy's fighting, the enemy's fighting, people are running. Oh Lord, how do we heal people? How do we change people? Well, this group in our this group in America I was talking about our nation, these military leaders, they were cut by, to the heart by what they saw happening to our country. They were cut to the heart and they got together and said, Brothers, what shall we do? In third world countries overseas, you know, they have military coups. You know, that they take the government from people. Well, if we do that, but the Constitution says we see that we see the country going down a certain road, we have an obligation mm -hmm. to protect it, to fight for it. They gave us the right to bear arms, not to shoot Bambi, not to shoot the little bunny, the feet, but to protect our country from those who would take it away from us. So here's what happened. What, this is not really a political thing. At the same time this was happening, there's a lot of people in our nation who were Christians who, who, who had a heart and they saw it happen. 
And you know, why did we, and we were one of those groups. It cut us to the heart when Christians are going to jail because they didn't bake a cake. Put this thing catch up here. And what did we do? Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, the Lord, if my people were called by my name and humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I'll hear their land. Right? A lot of people think that we're fighting a political thing right now. No, it's a spiritual thing. So those were cut to the heart of the military says, we've got to do something. We have an obligation. And the Christian says, we have an obligation. This is our land. This is our country. This is our home. This is, this is the hub of Christianity. If the Christianity in America fails, if freedom in America fails, it's going to fail everywhere. Cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. There's a time, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus was kind of cut to the heart. But it's not cut to the heart for the reasons that we are cut to the heart. But I love this story, and I want to share it with you. You've got your Bible, it's going to be Mark 8. I not have it up here. It's going to jump right in. Mark 8, 14 through 21. Mary Ann, read us verse 14 and 15, please. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. <laughs> The disciples have forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf when they have them in the boat. <laughs> and Jesus said, be careful. He warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. Now, I'm going to break this down. You know what a Pharisee is? A Pharisee is a corrupt Christian, a corrupt church leader. Corrupt. They don't have the right heart. They have a different motive. You know, they want to make it legalistic. They want to control people with it. All this kind of stuff. Now, that's, let's break this entire part of this, what Jesus said down. He says, Herod, Virgin uh, Pharisees, and that of Herod. Watch out. Be careful. Watch out for the Pharisees, the corrupt leader, Christian leaders, and watch out for Herod, the corrupt government leaders. <laughs> Be careful. That's the Greek word. Thank you. No, that's how I would have said it. It says to see, be careful. To see, to discern with the eyes, the, the mind's eye. To perceive by the senses when you feel it. You know how you want to feel the spirit? and want to feel that God's, what God's telling you? Okay. To discover by experience. A lot of times we have experiences in our life to help us discern, to help us feel, to help us diagnose what we're looking at. Because a lot of times, you know, what is God telling me? What is God not? Well, I've seen that before. I've lived that before. I, I've, I know what that is. Get it? All right? It also means you discern mentally. Observe, perceive, discover. And the key word there is understand. I know, this is going to get really good here in a minute. This thing will keep up with me. But, it's, but it means after all that is said and done, you've got to weigh it carefully. Because you can discern, oh yeah, that's God. That's God's thing for me. No, that's your, that's your flesh kicking in. That's not your spirit. Or you can talk yourself into the spirit or out of the spirit. You can talk yourself into the flesh or out of the flesh. I remember me and Dana got married. Well, we had a little extra money. God wants us to have that, 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 that new stereo. <laughs> <laughs> we need that new stereo. Oh, I'm a music kind of guy. I can't sing, but I'm music. And we had the extra money. We, I wanted the stereo. We've got the stereo. We got the new car, but we didn't need it. God told me. No, he didn't. <laughs> but I go stand up and go, okay, honey, I'll follow you. Get a good wife. I was never listening to the freaking spirit. I was listening to me. <laughs> but I didn't know that then. Well, I kind of did, but I really didn't. <laughs> like, yeah, I did. <laughs> if you've been young, you finally get a paycheck and money, yeah, you understand. Especially if you've not had anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus says, be careful. Watch out. Tires, be careful. Come on. Come on, computer. Now, let's get the word watch out. It means that uh, that word right there, they didn't help me out. To see with the eyes. This, he uses two words, two sets of phrases here that mean the same thing. To see with the eyes, to see with the mind, to perceive, discern, to sense, feel, recognize, comprehend, to become aware, to observe, to distinguish, to become acquainted with by experience. It's those two words, be careful and watch out, mean the exact same thing. You know? Why would 
Jesus used to be careful, watch out. He's trying to tell us something. Now watch out for what? It says the yeast. All right, got a zini, zuni. All right, that's the word for leaven or for yeast. And what it means is mental, moral corruption. And it means something that's a little bit deeper. Come on, computer. Minute. All right, mental moral corruption viewed from his tendency to infect others. Now let's put this together. Be careful. Watch out for the yeast, for the mental moral corruption that the Pharisees and Herod are going to infect others with. And Jesus says throughout the New Testament, do not be deceived, do not be deceived, do not be deceived, do not be deceived. Even the elect will be deceived. The Antichrist will be deceived. People become lovers of themselves. People, the church will think it's all about the show. Put your wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Watch out. Be careful. Watch out. Be careful who you let in your mind. What words you let in your mind. Who you let in your mind. Because it's yeast. And without you knowing it, until it's too late, you think you're on the straight and narrow. You think you can trust who you're listening to and who you're following. And not knowing you're being infected and being deceived. So how do you keep from that from happening? Jesus said, watch out. Be careful. Discern. See. Open your eyes. Learn from experience. What's a lot going on here. What's a lot going on here. Then in verse 16 it says this. They discussed with one another and said, Is it because we have no bread? <laughs> serious? This is like nothing to do with bread. <laughs> what you've done, disciples, is you let yourself get confused. You've been deceived. What are you talking about having no bread? And Jesus says this, do you not see or understand? Do you still not see or understand? Now that's pretty simple. See, now this is the Greek. To see and understand means you do not comprehend and discern. How many of y'all understand God, what God's doing in your life? Maybe it's because we're focused on the bread rather on what he said. They were, we, I haven't got enough bread. I don't got enough to feed. I don't got enough to eat. What we, we're so worried about physical stuff that we miss the spiritual. We miss Jesus. We miss his point because we're focusing on we hear what he said, but we don't hear him. We see what he said, but we don't see him. We think we understand, but we have no clue. 
because we're focused all wrong. But again, to have wisdom, he says, do you not still not see or understand? Don't you got some wisdom in there? You've lived a little bit. Have you, can't you connect the dots of what I'm doing? You know my word. You know my Holy Spirit. You know what is connect the dots. Do you not see the enemy? Do you not see his pawns, his minions, his game, when he's trying to destroy you with his temptation, his lies, the wrong crowd, you know, you know, doing the wrong things, giving in to the wrong things, following the wrong things, doubting when you shouldn't doubt, running when you shouldn't run? I mean, seriously, he's like, can you not see the enemy? Can you not see he's using you as a pawn? Can you not see his minions all around you trying to talk, talk you out of the will of God? Trying to talk you out of the purpose of God? Trying to lead you away from God's purpose and God's place and God's calling? Can, can you not see the devil's game? Why is he destroying your marriage? Your church? Your own mind? Do you still not see? Do you not see it with your eyes? Do you not hear? Do you not understand? The mind's eye is the discernment. You can see it with your eyes. You see physically what's happening, but then your, your mind's eye will discern what you see. It says, are your hearts hardened? Jesus says, are your hearts hardened? What does that mean? <laughs> this, has a, this actually has a different... Everybody knows what this means, but the purpose behind it. Watch this. Hardened hearts are not something that just happens. <laughs> oh, God, you know, it's one day I woke up and my heart's hardened. No, to have a hardened heart is you know the truth. You know the word of God. You know what you should do. I know what I should do. We know what we should do, but we don't do it. We purposely choose to have our hardened heart because we won't listen to the Spirit. I shouldn't click on that website. I shouldn't go to that place. I shouldn't go there emotionally, mentally, physically. I should not let those thoughts in my mind. I should not let those voices. I should not listen to them. I should not follow them. You get a hardened heart. What happens if you get a hardened heart? You get angry with God, and you're going to walk out, and you're going to be mad, and you're going to stomp your feet. You're going to show your little butt. Or you're going to go over to one corner, and you're going to, you're going to, Lord, Lord, I have to be Lord, you know, Lord, 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 you know, you're God. Or you're going to destroy your marriage. You're going to destroy your relationships. Now, we purposely choose to harden our hearts when we know what we should do, but we don't do the truth. The rest of the definition here, in the rest of poro, poro, harden, to cover with a thick skin, again, purposely, to harden by cover with, as with a callus, purposely, to make harden. These are the definitions, to make. To grow hard, to become dull, purposely by rejecting and are living in the truth. When we reject the truth, you've got to get a hardened heart. It says to lose the power of understanding. That was the last one. To lose the power of understanding. Go to understand what you're doing. Because you gave in to the fears, the doubts. You were disobedient. You were rebellious. You didn't believe. You didn't trust. And then they're like, oh, I don't understand. That's right. And that's God's fault. I mean, he's like, gee, he's like, why are you talking about the bread again, Jeff? Huh? Why are you talking about the bread again, Jeff? I've given you my word. I've given you my spirit. I've given you the truth. I've given you peace. I've given you joy. What'd you do with it? Did you let it go? Did you let the enemy take it? Did you walk away? Did you turn your back on it? Oh, you chose to have a hardened heart. All this fear you're dealing with right now, you chose that and I didn't give it to you. In fact, the enemy didn't even give it to you. The enemy just kind of pushed you a little bit, reminding you of a little bit of your past. You know, that same person or that same situation the same doubt. As soon as you entertain it, go harden your heart and turn everything around. Do you have eyes but fail to see? Do you have ears but fail to hear? <laughs> yes, he's been a little, a little, a little, a little, a little, a little cynical here. He says, you are blind, lost, and confused because you chose. You chose not to see and not to hear. 
I've given you eyes to see and ears to hear. You just don't use them. You just make clothes. And it says, do you remember? Don't you remember? I love that. Don't you remember? What, 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 is, what is Jesus saying here? Don't you remember? What's he saying? Jesus says, I love this, don't you remember what I've done in your life? Don't you remember when I gave my life for you? Don't you remember when I redeemed your life, loved you, saved you, helped you, fought for you, did that miracle in your life? Don't you remember? Don't you remember that day you came to the altar? Don't you remember that day when you broke down and you gave it all to me? Don't you remember? It happened. Why are you looking for it again? Did you hurt me hard again? Are you blind? Did you go back? Do you, don't you remember the truth, my truth? And I love this part, our truth. We really had it. We really come together, you and I, the Lord says. We really, we really had that time together, Marianne, Chris. But don't you remember that truth? Don't you remember the truth of my father's word? I formed you in the womb. I knew you. I created you. I love you. I sent my son and he died for you. Don't you remember the day, <laughs> the time, the feeling, the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the power? <laughs> Don't you remember when I lifted you up, restored you, redeemed you, healed you? Don't you remember? So what's the issue? Of course we remember. I mean, it might have been a long time ago. It might have been last week, last month. But what happened? Because there's an issue. There's another issue going on. Jesus summarized the issue that Christians and, uh, Christianity and Christians have today. We either have, ready? We either have... A discernment problem? I don't understand. You can't discern the truth. I get it. Or we have a mind problem. Don't you see in here? Can't you process this in your mind? I mean, I mean, you got eyes and ears. You can see. Do you have a heart problem? Are your hearts hurting? Or maybe you got a memory problem and you just don't remember. That's the option. That's what Jesus said. This has got to do with bread. This has got everything to do with my relationship with you. And there's a there is a problem here. Either you can't discern the truth, or <laughs> you got a mind problem. You can't, your mind's got to renew. That's what Dave's been teaching on. We need to renew our minds. We got a heart problem. We don't love. We're still angry. We're still hurt. We're still bitter over something, and it comes out on the people we love. Or we have a memory problem. <laughs> 